A 35-year-old guy has a 1.5% probability of dying during the next 10 years. However, the same guy at 75 has a 45% risk of dying before reaching the age of 85. Clearly, aging is detrimental to our health. On the plus side, we have made significant strides in understanding the underlying processes that govern aging and late-life illness. Now Japan's government has directly started to fund national research projects in the hope of finding a cure for aging, and surprisingly, they already got some very promising results. A Japanese research team claims to have produced a vaccination to eradicate so-called zombie cells, which amass with age and destroy neighboring cells, resulting in aging-related disorders such as arterial stiffness. The study, led by Juntendo University professor Toru Minamino, revealed that mice given the vaccination exhibited reductions in zombie cells, also known as senescent cells in medicine, and in regions impacted by vascular stiffness. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will talk to you about what this Japanese team has actually discovered, how it's intended to keep us young and healthy for a much longer time, and finally, what a non-aging group of people means for the future of society. A few tightly connected biological processes, sometimes referred to as aging hallmarks, such as our supply of stem cells and cell communication, function to keep us healthy in the early stages of our lives, with issues occurring when they begin to fail. Clinical trials are currently underway to see if targeting some of these characteristics will benefit diabetic kidney disease, immunological function, and age-related lung scarring, among other things. So far, everything is going swimmingly. Unfortunately, there are many unsolved issues in the biology of aging. The American Federation for Aging Research, a nonprofit organization, has arranged a series of meetings for renowned scientists and clinicians to assess what they are and how to treat them. The experts agreed that knowing what is unique about the biology of individuals who live for more than a century is now a critical problem. The vaccine is expected to be used to treat arterial stiffness, diabetes, and other aging-related disorders. On Friday, the team's findings were published in the online version of the journal Nature Aging. Senescent cells are those that have ceased dividing but have not died. They create inflammation by releasing chemicals that harm neighboring healthy cells. The researchers identified a protein prevalent in senescent cells in humans and mice and developed a peptide vaccination based on one of the protein's amino acids. The vaccination stimulates the body to produce antibodies that bind to senescent cells, which are then eliminated by white blood cells that bind to the antibodies. When the researchers gave the vaccination to animals with arterial stiffness, many accumulated senescent cells were eliminated, and diseased regions decreased. According to the researchers, when supplied to old mice, the frailty progression was slower than in uninfected animals. Many of the currently available medications for removing senescent cells are anti-cancer therapies and may have undesirable side effects. The new vaccination had fewer side effects and lasted longer, according to the researchers. Senescent cells are distinct in that they ultimately cease proliferating but do not die off as expected. Instead, they stay and continue to emit chemicals that might cause inflammation. A very small number of senescent cells, like the one rotten piece of fruit that corrupts the entire bowl, can endure and propagate inflammation that can harm nearby cells. However, not all senescent cells are detrimental. The chemicals and substances produced by senescent cells referred to as the senescent secretome serve critical functions throughout the lifetime, including embryonic development, childbirth, and wound healing. With age, the amount of senescent cells in a person's body grows. Senescent cells collect and contaminate healthy cells as the immune system ages. Because senescent cells in the brain can damage cognitive abilities, this can impact a person's capacity to resist stress or disease, recover from injuries, and learn new things. As a result, cellular senescence has been linked to a wide range of age-associated diseases, including cancer, diabetes, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, and osteoarthritis. It has also been associated to deterioration in vision, movement, and cognitive abilities. Investigations are planned to determine if senescent skin cells contribute to sagging and wrinkling, as well as whether senescent cells are linked to the cytokine storm of inflammation that makes diseases so dangerous for older persons. 
Cellular senescence has been on the radar of scientists since the early 1960s, when Leonard Hayflick, Ph.D., and his colleague Paul Moorhead, Ph.D., challenged the long-held scientific consensus that human cell samples could multiply in lab cultures indefinitely. Hayflick and Moorhead demonstrated that there is a limit to the number of division cycles before cells undergo senescence. For a long time following that discovery, senescence was thought to be an unusual side effect of laboratory cell growth conditions. It was poorly understood and investigated by only a few research teams, but there has been a surge in interest in the last 20 years. Today, it is a new but promising scientific subject that has prompted further NIH research as well as private business backing for studies to find and develop medications that might help Mother Nature sweep out senescent cells. These folks account for less than 0.02% of the UK population but outlive their contemporaries by over 50 years. How do they do it? We know that centenarians live such long lives because they are very healthy. They are in excellent health for roughly 30 years longer than other people, and when they do become ill, they are only ill for a brief time. This morbidity compression is plainly beneficial to them, but it also helps society as a whole. In the United States, the cost of medical treatment for a centenarian in their final two years of life is around one-third that of someone who dies in their 70s. Children of centenarians are also more healthier than the general population, indicating that they inherited something helpful from their parents. Is this, however, a hereditary or environmental factor? Are centenarians role models for living a healthy lifestyle? In the general population, losing weight, quitting smoking, drinking moderately, and eating at least five servings of fruits and vegetables per day can enhance life expectancy by up to 14 years when compared to those who do none of these things. This disparity exceeds that observed between the least and most poor districts in the UK, and it would seem logical that it would play a part in surviving for a century. Surprisingly, this does not have to be the case. According to one research, up to 60% of Ashkenazi Jewish centenarians have smoked severely for the most of their life, half have been fat for the same amount of time, less than half engage in even moderate exercise, and just 3% are vegetarians. The offspring of centenarians do not appear to be any more health conscious than the general population. They had half the prevalence of cardiovascular disease when compared to peers with the same food intake, affluence, and body weight. These folks have a natural ability to stand out. Is it possible that it is due to uncommon genetics? If this is the case, there are two possibilities. Centenarians may have uncommon genetic variations that increase lifespan, or they may lack typical ones that cause late life illness and disability. Several research, including our own, have found that centenarians had the same number of harmful genetic variations as the overall population. Some people have two copies of the greatest known common risk gene for Alzheimer's disease yet do not get the disease. As a result, a viable working hypothesis is that centenarians have uncommon, beneficial genetic variants rather than a lack of harmful ones. And the best available data supports this. Over 60% of centenarians have genetic alterations that affect the genes that govern development in childhood. This means that these extraordinary individuals are human instances of a form of lifetime extension found in other animals. Most people are aware that little dogs live longer than large dogs, but few are aware that this is a universal phenomena throughout the animal kingdom. Ponies can outlive horses, and many types of laboratory mice with dwarfing mutations outlive their full-sized counterparts. Reduced amounts of a growth hormone called IGF the first of may be one reason of this, albeit human centenarians are not always shorter than the rest of us. Growth hormone is obviously required early in life, but there is growing evidence that high levels of IGF-1 in mid to late life are associated with an increased risk of late life illness. The precise processes underlying this are unknown, but even among centenarians, women with the lowest amounts of growth hormone outlive those with the highest. They also have improved cognitive and motor performance. Centenarians, in the end, are natural experiments that demonstrate that it is possible to live in superb health, even if you were dealt a dangerous genetic hand and choose to ignore health messages, but only if you possess uncommon, poorly known mutations. Understanding how these operate in detail might enable scientists to design novel medications or other treatments that target biological processes in the appropriate tissues at the right time. If they become a reality, perhaps more of us will live to see the next century than we anticipate. But, until then, don't listen to centenarians' advice on living a healthy lifestyle. So, 
What is your opinion on this rather crazy sounding idea of removing dead and infected cells from our body to undo and prevent the damage which is commonly associated with what we call aging? Do you believe that this actually has a chance of keeping us young forever, or at the very least for a longer time? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.